Right guys, in this video I'm going to be finishing off my table saw and router table cabinet. It doesn't go exactly to plan but hopefully it's still useful for you to watch and maybe it'll give you some ideas and I'm sure you'll do a much better job than I have. I hope you like it. I mounted the Evolution Fury table saw to the cart and then I made a start on attaching the plywood top. It's a bit lower than the actual metal top at this stage because I'm going to be adding some hardboard to the top that I got from UK Flooring Supplier.co.uk. I can only apologise for not actually filming the process of mounting the fence to this side of the table. Obviously it was simple to mount it to the table saw itself because that's just the normal mounting mechanism with the nuts and bolts. But this side, it was really a case of trial and error. There was a lot of offering it up, seeing if it was level, drilling new holes, there's multiple holes in here to try and get it all nice and level. But then all that I did was from the back, I just countersunk some large holes in order to sink the heads of the bolts into it and then it's connected to the actual metal rail of the fence system with nuts and bolts. It's really secure and it's perfectly level with the other one now. And the existing fence moves really nicely across the two. I've still got to put the masonite on the top, which is the tempered hardboard, so that'll bring the level up the same with the table, so it should move even better then. Unfortunately, this aluminium extrusion that I planned to use originally for the fence, I couldn't get it mounted strong enough without it deflecting at the end. So I've reverted back to using the original fence because when this is locked down, it's rock solid and it doesn't move at all at the end. I was having the problem of this twisting. Right, this is the Craig insert plate that's already pre-drilled to fit my Triton router. So I haven't got to do any faffing about drilling for the router because this is already done for me, which is brilliant. I've got to say a huge thank you to Craig. They very kindly sent me one out to try and to show all of you in this video. So let's just have a quick look over what you actually get with the insert plate. You get the insert plate itself and then these red discs are the little mini inserts that you're putting depending on the size of the router bit. So as you can see at the moment, there's a smaller opening. You've got a larger opening, and then you've also got a slightly larger opening, but that's got a fitting that you can fit a guide bush in. So if you're doing any work that your router bit hasn't got a bearing on or anything like that, you can use a guide bush in, and that will let you run your work along a template or something like that, so it can follow a guide. And that's really useful to have because not all routers will accept a guide bush so by fitting it into this insert plate you'll be enabling that it comes with this really handy tool to quickly change these inserts because that's in solid you can't get that out by hand but by just using this put it into the two holes with the pegs that i'm on the back and as you can see it's handily marked twist it to the right to lock and twist it to the left to unlock so it's just a, a twist and you can remove it and I can drop in the new one and then again right to lock and that's locked in now and I could fit a guide bush into that or of course I could have fit the bigger one they do actually do some more sizes as well, more incremental sizes so you can get a closer fit to each router that you've got. And they also have one that's not got any hole in at all, so you can custom fit it to the size that you want. It also comes with the mounting screws to actually mount it to your router. So whatever router you've got, you can get those to fit perfectly. Now this router plate of course is pre-drilled for the Triton router but you can get an insert plate that's got no pre-drilled holes so you can fit it to whatever specific router you've got. So it's really versatile in whatever tool you're using. Craig also very kindly sent over the insert plate levelers. Now these aren't always included with the insert depending on where you buy it from but you can easily get these separately and they're really worthwhile having because what it means is I've just got to cut a hole for the insert plate to drop into flush 
I haven't got to worry about creating a rabbit around the edge because these little corner blocks will affix underneath the table and then there's two levelling screws for each corner so I can bring it up flush complete with the table and completely level so those are fully adjustable which makes it really easy to set up and use. I used a 38mm diameter hole saw to actually cut out the corners and then I had a flush trim bit in my router and I just went round the edges plunging a little bit each time until I was all the way through the 18mm ply and this should give me a perfect fit for the insert plate. Ok so I flipped the tabletop over and as you can see I've had a bit of tear out underneath but that shouldn't affect things too much. I've unwrapped the insert plate levellers and as you can see they've got a recess for the corner that helps align it in the right position so you can't put them in the wrong place they'll always register into the corner got four of them for each corner and you also get the levelling threaded rod insert type things that actually go in the two side threaded portions on the corner level levelers itself so those can be raised and lowered to bring the actual insert plate flush with the tabletop and then you've also got the bolts that go right through the insert plate and into the centre one just to secure everything into place it also comes with inch and a quarter Craig screws these are a lot like the pocket hole screws and what's really good I think it comes with comes with a screwdriver bit as well for the square driver because not everybody's got that but that's brilliant that is, I didn't expect that to be included. I'm actually going to be using some 25mm screws which are roughly one inch because I'm using 18mm plywood, the inch and a quarter would have just been too long and they would have poked out and I don't want that, I want it below the surface so I'm going to be using the 25mm screws, they're exactly the same, square driver, these are pocket hole screws but they're exactly the same so that's what I'm going to be using and I'll just get those fitted now. Just mounting the hardboard now, I'm only using some panel pins because I want to be able to easily remove this top if it was to get scratched or damaged and I can just put a fresh piece on. First time using my Triton router and already I could see a big difference over my old Lamborghini one, much more powerful. I just mark around the Craig insert just to make sure I was on the right lines and that fits nice and flush. To raise and lower the bit, it's just a case of sliding in the stick and winding it up and then winding it down. It works really smooth and it's a lot easier doing it from above the table. I've gone ahead and made a couple of drawers just out of some scrap plywood that I had lying around. I've used pocket hole joinery just to fix it together. My thinking is it's workshop drawers, they're not going to be seen, they're just going to be used for storing the bits and bobs for the router and for catching the sawdust off the table saw so it hasn't got to be very pretty. As you can see as well the bottom is just some spare um, 6mm ply that I had lying around. So I've added a drawer front onto it as well and on the bottom I've got some slick strips which is some um, low friction plastic that's self adhesive on the back to help the drawer slide on the bottom. I've got a chamfer bit installed in the router so this will be my first time properly using it in the router table so I can't wait to give it a try and I'm just going to apply a 45 degree chamfer all the way around the edge of the drawer front. I can now do the same to the other one, give them both a quick sand and get them sprayed red. So this is what I'm calling complete. 
I've got the original fence set up and working great. It slides easily right the way along the right hand side which gives me the most cutting capacity that I can use. Like I say the fence has been the real disappointment for me. I wanted to make a custom one but I'm going to hold out and I'm going to get the Evolution Rage table saw. It's going to be a much better saw for me. It's got a sliding table and a full length fence as well which I can customise to enable me to also use it for the router. If I want to use the router with a fence in the meantime I'll just clamp a straight edge onto it and that'll be fine. The Craig insert plate turned out brilliant. Those levellers, I highly recommend getting the levellers if you're going to go with a Craig insert plate. It made it so much more easier just to get it level and all flush and just it took a lot of hard work out of it. I didn't need to create a rabbit in the work or anything like that so brilliant that is. The Titan router I'm really pleased with this Titan router. The fact that I can just use the winding stick to just raise and lower the bit and I can change the bit from above the table with just one spanner. And Oscar likes to come in and ruin the shot. With my old router I had to get a spanner in and push down a spindle lock which was broken. It was, it was just horrible. This is a pleasure to use. You just saw me finishing off the drawers and this is what I'm left with. I'm really happy with how the actual plywood is showing through. I think it looks nice being able to see the, to see the grain of the plywood through the actual red spray paint. I just put some normal drawer handles on and the drawer slides really well. This is just the drawer that's going to be catching the sawdust from the actual table saw. So hopefully that'll cut down on a lot of the dust that gets thrown all around the workshop. And then on this side, Obviously I've got access to the router and then I've got another sliding drawer here that I'm going to keep all the bits to the router and the spanner and different attachments and things like that. So, like I say, it's not exactly how I wanted it to turn out but it saved a lot of space. I've combined two tools, the router and the table saw. So that's really has saved me a lot of room and it just makes it a lot more easier to use combining the two tools together so sorry that it wasn't exactly what I was setting out to do I'm gonna get the evolution rage table saw as soon as I can save up the money that is but if you did like the video please give it a thumbs up if you didn't like it give it a thumbs down if you've got any questions please leave them in the comments below I'll answer all comments and I really appreciate your feedback if you're not already subscribed please do so I really appreciate all my subscribers and if you subscribe you'll be sure to get a notification whenever I release a new video. I'll give you a sneak peek of what's coming up next. It's going to be a fold down workstation for the x CNC. So that should be up within the next week as well so I'll keep your eye out for that one. And like I say click that subscribe button if you don't want to miss it. Thanks for watching again.